Our base is Heads Nook Hall in Cumbria, seven miles east of Carlisle. The old market town of Brampton, two miles south of Hadrian's Wall, is a few miles away. In Front Street is St. Martin's Church, built by the Earl of Carlisle in 1878. The Moot Hall, built in 1817, is an octagonal building which housed the town hall and a market. In the afternoon, we drive to Talkin Tarn Country Park two miles from Brampton. We walk the 1.3 mile track around the 65 acre lake, which is set in 120 acres of farmland and woodland. The tarn is a kettle hole lake formed by glacial action over 10,000 years ago. It has a maximum depth of 50 feet and is fed by underground streams. Today we are at Banks East Turret, walking five miles alongside Hadrian's Wall to Gillsland. This is Lee Hill Turret. The turrets were small stone watchtowers, built every one third of a Roman mile between the mile castles. Passing through some of the most beautiful landscapes of Cumbria and Northumberland, Hadrian's Wall is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, stretching almost 80 miles from the Irish Sea to the North Sea. We reach Birdoswold Roman Fort one of the best preserved of the 16 forts along the wall. From here, the longest surviving stretch of Hadrian's Wall leads towards Gillsland. The wall was built in 122 AD and was originally a turf wall. At Willowford, we reached the River Irving. After a further climb or so, we reached Gillsland and returned to the car by bus. In the afternoon, we drive back to the small village of Gillsland, which straddles the border between Cumbria and Northumberland. We spend an hour or so exploring the River Irthing. Six miles from Gillsland is Lanacost Priory, founded in 1169 and built with stones from nearby Hadrian's Wall. Nearby is the attractive old sandstone bridge over the River Irthing, built in 1724. The last traffic passed over in 1962, when a new bridge was opened.
we decide to travel further afield and drive 30 miles to the northern end of the Lake District. Horswater Dam construction was started in 1929, flooding the Valley of Mardale to provide water for Manchester Corporation. The lake is four miles long and half a mile wide with a maximum depth of 200 feet and can hold around 18 billion gallons. It is a very tranquil and less visited part of the Lake District due to the access by the one and only narrow road to this peaceful spot. We drive to the end of the road and take a footpath around the lake. From a bridge over a beck, we spot an adder basking on the rocks beside the water. As we return to the car, the clouds clear for a sunny drive back. This morning, we start again at Banks East Turret, where we commenced our previous walk two days ago. But today we are driving around the area, passing again Hadrian's Wall near Birdoswold. Two miles from Hadrian's Wall is the small pretty town of Holtwistle in Northumberland. It claims to be the geographical centre of Britain. The river South Tyne flows under the old iron bridge completed in 1875. Just along the river is the Alston Arches Viaduct, a stone bridge built in 1851 for the railway, but now pedestrian only. Beneath the bridge is the Holt Whistle Fish Pass, opened in 2015. Leaving Holt Whistle, we drive east to Hayden Bridge. The old bridge, 
originally built in 1309, was rebuilt in 1776 after a flood. Driving south into the Pennines, we reached the small Northumberland village of Allendale. There is an attractive marketplace close to the 14th century St Cuthbert's Church. We continue through beautiful countryside, passing the old Kilhope lead mine. A glimpse of Tulkin Tarn finishes the day. We are attempting another tougher walk today on a further five mile stretch of Hadrian's Wall. We are starting from Walltown Quarry and hope to reach Cor Gap beyond Corfield Quarry and then return by bus. This has been a strenuous walk on a very hot July day. Back at Walltown Quarry, we have a welcome rest. Our final day, and we are driving along the marshes on the banks of the Solway Firth in Cumbria, looking across to Scotland. Cattle graze on the salt marshes and stray onto the sands, but are aware of the rising tide. At Anthorn, we look south across the Wampool estuary to the Lake District Fells. Passing through Skinburness, we reach the seaside town of Silleth and continue south towards Maryport. Maryport, a small fishing village, was developed in the 18th century into a coal port. From the bridge over the River Ellen, we see a fishy tail a sculpture by local artist Colin Telfer. A stroll around the harbour finishes our visit to Maryport 
and this holiday in northwest England. <laughs>